They're doing all kinds of things. Some of them are entrepreneurs. One guy I was reaching out to appears to be a professor of something in social sciences. Actually, it's in social security law. It's very interesting. You, if you can use the mathematical ideas to do all kinds of different things, we'll get to that too. Okay. But now I want to, I want to, I want to tie towards something which will be a, a central theme that can help to bring a lot of the ideas together in this talk. Last time when I went around, I did a talk about dice. Was anyone here in this auditorium when I did some talk about rolling dice? Do you remember that? There was that one crazy guy who was in the front rolling dice. Okay, yeah, the, the one crazy guy was me. Yeah, so I was doing that. Uh, and that was what I did like a long time ago. That was my, I was going around trying to find interesting ways to teach things. Since then, I focused my time around figuring out ways to solve problems. So I moved from showing math as interesting to actually solving some actual problems. And the, the problem I've been thinking about a lot lately is one called ChatGPT. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. Oh, you do? Uh, All right. So, uh, why don't we go on ChatGPT and do a demo? Yeah, does it work? Does it work? Let's find out. I'm actually curious, does it work here? No, I don't think it works. It's blocked, it's blocked. It's always blocked. Because, well, actually, I heard that it's blocked in New York City. The, uh, New York City schools, New York City schools. Is it? I think New York City Department of Education blocked it. It's blocked. Actually, when I went to when I went to another middle school, I gave a talk at Q300. It's another middle school in Queens. When I gave a talk there to some seventh graders, and I said, "Do you like ChatGPT?" They said they hated ChatGPT. They said they hated ChatGPT because you have to do all your essays by hand now. <laughs> I just said, "Welcome back to the 1990s." But <laughs> uh, but in any case, in any case, like yeah, there's this thing called ChatGPT. And since it's blocked, I actually usually come with a recording of some questions I've asked it, just so that I can actually show you what it can do, right? Right? And the thing that made me the most concerned about ChatGPT is when I found out that it can actually do homework pretty well. Actually, that's why it's bad. Please do not use this to cheat on your homework, all right? So let's just go and do a few examples, okay? Let me do a few examples that are what got me pretty interested. By the way, I want to emphasize to all the teachers here, I'm not telling everyone that you should use this to cheat on your homework. Actually, quite the opposite. Because we will soon find out that if you just use this to cheat on your homework, you will be worse than it, which is a very bad situation to be in. That's a really bad situation to be in, all right? You want to be better than this, not worse than this. But for example, if you ask it to do something standard, right? Here's a standard question. What is two plus four plus six plus all the way up to 100? Well, out comes something that has not just an answer, but it has words. It shows the work. By the way, this is the GPT 4.0, so you, this is not the free version, this is the one that you subscribe to. But if you can see, it shows all the work. In fact, if a student copied this and turned it in, anyone would know that it's cheating because no student shows the work this well. <laughs> it's a textbook solution. It's got every single step written down. And it's a little bit of a scary concept for me to say, the reason you know it wasn't done by a person is because no one would do this to this level of detail. Do you know what I mean? And that's also why I say this thing. When you see this tool, it's not a cheating tool. It's the future, and you want to be better than it, not worse than it. Okay? So this, these are the thoughts that I want to put out. And as you can see, it got the answer. Pretty impressive. By the way, if you use the free version of ChatGPT, it's not as accurate. The one that you pay for is more accurate. Do you know why they make the free version free, by the way? Here's another really good point. By the way, these guys are not do-gooders. Well, maybe they are, but I'm, I'll say they're they're, they're a money-making company. They're a Silicon Valley company. What kind of Silicon Valley company makes a free product? Why is it free? Yeah. Because they need data. So you see, every night at about 8 o'clock p.m., it slows down. Because at 8 o'clock p.m., what's happening? Yeah. They collect the data. How are they collecting the data at 8 o'clock p.m.? Why, is it, why do I say every day, every weekday at 8 o'clock p.m. it kind of slows down? It's because that's when people are doing homework. Okay, that's when people are feeding in all their homework. All right? And so they made it free so they can suck in the entire United States curriculum. So that even though it can do this today, by next year it will know the whole U.S. curriculum, it will be even better. 
So actually, all the people cheating on their homework are just feeding it, making it smarter. Okay, so be aware of that. Be aware of that. Because you know, they are out there to try to help you. Just to make sure you know, they're not out there to try to make sure that you succeed, okay? They want to be more powerful. So just, just be careful. Let's